This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're looking at the LG G Vista. Did they have to put the G in there? Really, it's a little hard to say it that way. Anyway, this is an Android smartphone called a Fablet 5.7 inch display. It's available on Verizon Wireless now. It's also going to be coming to AT&T, and it's a kind of the affordable Fablet family. It really has mid-range specs, $49 on contract, $399 full retail, so not a bad price. We're going to look at it now. So here it is, another big Android phone, 5.7 inch IPS display here. This is the LG G Vista. Again, obviously, right there, there's a logo on Verizon Wireless. And this is one of those mid-rangey affordable Android phablet slash smartphone. That means it's kind of big for a phone, but certainly smaller than a tablet. And these days, honestly, it's starting to look a lot more normal. It's about the same size as the Note 3. We'll show you the difference. I have big hands. It fits in my hand. One-handed operation. There is software, so you can shift the dialer to one side or the other, make it easier to use. Obviously, with your thumb, I can't even reach with my pretty big hands and long fingers on this. So it's a handful of a phone. But for those of you who want a big phone, but you don't want to pay for the Note 3 or uh, one of the other higher-end phablets that have been on the market, well, it's pretty compelling. 0.36 inches thick or thin as depending how you want to look at it. So it's a pretty thin device, yet the battery is removable. The back cover comes off, and I'll show you that, which is pretty cool. Just under 6 ounces, 5.93 ounces. So given the size of the phone, that's not too bad. Now here's the, depends on your taste, of course, but here's what I would call the bad news. We're going back to last year's LG Super Shiny. It looks disgusting when you handle it finish. Wow. Shiny plastic. It says, hello, I'm plastic. Not trying to fool you at all. You can use it to signal flare if you have to on a shiny day, sunny day. Uh, other than that, you know, it's $49 on contract. We can't complain too much. It's $399 off contract, which is quite affordable. That's $200 less than the LG G3. For those of you who are buying on contract, the contract pricing is not so far apart because right now Verizon's having a special where most of their flagship phones are $99 instead of $199. So that makes these look like less of a deal. But for those of you who are going to pay full retail, well, then it is a consideration. You can see the speaker hole is back here. We have the usual rear LG buttons. LG likes to do that. So you've got your power button right there and the volume up and down buttons here. And the idea is when your hand wraps around it, your finger hopefully will naturally fall somewhere around there. As always, I'd like these to be a little bit more tactile. This button doesn't stick up a lot. The dips for the volume really aren't so significant. So you're probably going to be looking from time to time so you don't shut off the phone by accident when you're really meant to hit the volume. 8 megapixel camera here and has high resolution as the LG G3, but it does use the same laser autofocus system taken from LG's robotic vacuum cleaner division, which means fast focusing times. We've got our LED flash there, and there's where our laser's peeking out at you. Up top, headphone jack, pretty much standard stuff. There we have, obviously, there's not going to be any volume controls or power on the side because it's on the back. And down here, micro USB 2.0 port, pretty much standard fare, another microphone hole. So if you want to take the back cover off this guy, there's a little grab point right here on the side. And it's really easy actually to take it off. There's your back cover right there. 3200 milliamp battery. That is a big battery. They have room for a big battery in here, so that is great. That means really long battery life, especially given the resolution and the processor used in here, neither of which are terribly demanding. We'll tell you about that in a minute. Here's your micro SD card slot, and above that stacked right on top is where you would put a micro SD card. So you probably want one of those to put your files on, your, your multimedia, your videos, all that sort of thing, because this only has 8 gigs of internal storage with about 3.9 gigs available for your use. For regular applications, you Evernote, things like that, that's fine. But for those really big fat games, if you're into something like Asphalt 8 Racing, uh, those can be a gig, more than a gig, so you're not going to fit too many of those on at once. That's the price you pay when you get a more budget-oriented phone. Cover also goes back on very easily, not too fiddly, not a problem. And we have LG's knock code for security and the knock on just to turn it on. So there you go, that's nice that you get that. And you get their multitasking software here, you got the split window view, you have the front camera can keep an eye on you if you're actually looking at the screen, it won't turn off the screen, that's a feature we see on a lot of Samsung phones as well. So, Standard LG UI here, really not a whole lot difference from the LG G3. You can see there's a giant Amazon widget right here. 
Verizon still has a strong relationship with Amazon, so there's a whole lot of preloaded Amazon software. And that's what our application palette looks like right there. You separate from your apps and your widgets, you can do search, and you can control how they're arranged like so. LG does a nice job of letting you customize the UI. You can even do things like swap the bottom capacitive, non-capacitive buttons rather than the touch buttons right here. Notice we have soft buttons, so we're not using anything on the bezel to control the phone. The resolution is 1280 by 720, not full HD, not close, which would be okay if this was a 4.5 or 4.7 inch phone because the pixel density would still be very high, but given the fact that this is a 5.7 inch phone, it means that you won't look at this and say, oh my god, the clarity is absolutely stunning on this when you're looking at text or even watching videos. It won't look quite as sharp as it will in a full HD display. For example, here's the SunSpider JavaScript test results, and I had to really zoom out to be able to read it, because when it's small, it's not so easy to see. You can see some aliasing on the text, staircasing of letters, that sort of thing. So for those of you who are avid readers, ebooks, whatever it is, reading web pages, probably not going to be such a thrill. The big screen is going to be very appealing here, but the lack of sharpness, not so much. Now you can make your fonts bigger and that's going to help in your e-reading application, for example. And obviously you can zoom in the web browser. That will help as well. This is what LG's keyboard looks like. It's their learning keyboard. It learns if you make mistakes frequently. It kind of adjusts the radius for each of the keys right here. Pretty easy to use. Given that it's a big screen phone, they can have the number keys up top here, which is always nice. And we'll see what our website looks like. So there's the desktop view of our website, not the mobile version. And it's reasonably readable, but again, you can see a little lack of excellent sharpness on the text. For the price and for everything that you get on the phone, I'm not going to complain too much. And again, when you zoom out, it becomes perfectly readable. The white is fairly neutral on this. This is an IPS display. And viewing angles, you can see as I'm turning it, it's, they're pretty good on this. So no complaints there. Also, if you turn off auto brightness, this, this can get quite bright too. Inside we have Android 4.4 KitKat. And we're running on the 1.2 gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon 400 CPU. We've seen that on a lot of mid-range phones lately. We just saw the HTC One Remix, for example, running on that same processor with Adreno 305 graphics. And again, like the Remix, has 1.5 gigs of RAM. So sandwiched between the 1 gig on low-end phones and the 2 gigs on flagship phones, that's a plenty enough RAM, honestly, for most people to run applications, especially because LG's skin may be visually, well, pretty distinctive and noticeable, but they don't actually customize the operating system so super heavily that they need a lot of help there with extra RAM to run things. Again, the biggest limitation is going to be the 8 gigs of storage with only about 3.9 gigs free. Not a whole super, super lot, but you can put your music library on a card and your video library and you're going to be good to go. 1.3 megapixel camera up front, no 2 megapixel, no 5 megapixel. Again, it's going to be a little bit lower end. 8 megapixel camera on the rear. You know, it's not bad. It's, yes, it's 8 megapixels. We're used to 13 or 16 these days, but it's not so bad. And again, the focusing is pretty quick, too. So let's check out the camera UI and see how it does. So pretty simple viewfinder right here, and pretty huge one. 5.7 inches is living large. It's pretty luxurious, actually. You can see the multiple focus points right here, and if you want to get to your stuff, you just tap right over there. You can control the flash. You can switch front and rear camera, your modes, more settings, easily switching between photo and video. By the way, this can take a photo while shooting video at the same time. It has HDR mode. It also has panorama mode and as you can see right here, we got auto, we got panorama, and that is it for that. For settings, we got self timer, save location, whether you want your grid on or not, whether you want HDR auto or not. So a bit simplified compared to other LGs. You can tap to choose your focus point, shoot right there. It's going to be pretty quick. This can also shoot 1080p video. simple as that. And the video that I captured is actually pretty, yes, it's short, but it's pretty sharp, which is nice. And there's our picture of Ernie the bath toy. For an 8 megapixel camera, that really isn't bad. Good, good colors, very good light balance overall. Some of the highlights are a little bit blown out, but not too bad. Again, for your $49 on your phablet, it's pretty good.
Phone has 4G LTE, no surprise there on Verizon. This is a CDMA phone with EVDO Rev A 3G. This does not have World GSM roaming. Again, for your $49, they ain't going to give you that, or for your $399 full contract. It has NFC, the usual GPS, Wi-Fi, 802.11bgn dual band. So pretty much standard stuff there. No AC wireless. I don't think that's going to really make anybody weep. It is kind of nice you get NFC there. I know some of you are enthusiastic about that. And of course we have Bluetooth 4.0. One of the things that really is stand out about this is battery life. Unless you set the screen to like max brightness, you know, in consideration of battery life, don't do that. And most of the time, unless you're outdoors in sunlight, you won't need to do that. Battery life on this is ex excellent. The Snapdragon 400, well, it sips power. It's half the speed of the Snapdragon 800 and 801 that's used in flagships. You got a huge battery in here. You have only a 720p display. Granted, it is a 5.7 inch panel, but this guy, you can go two days on a charge with moderate use. That's pretty darn impressive with today's big Android phones. And now for a little lineup here, we have the LG G Vista in the middle, 5.7 inch. There's our 5.5 inch LG G3. And this little sleepy fellow right here is our Samsung Galaxy Note 3. So you get the idea size-wise where it fits in. As you might expect, it's kind of just right in between these guys and they're all fairly close in size. And lastly, here's a comparison with the LG G Flex, the curvy banana phone, six inch display. In a way you could say that somebody just flattened out the G Flex and gave you a little slower internals to make the G Vista right here. Obviously the Flex is still a really big phone, so it's considerably bigger than any of the other phones that we've looked at. At six inches, it's almost as big as obviously a seven inch tablet. In terms of synthetic benchmarks on Quadrant, it scored 87.21 on Tutu, 17,400. 3D Mark Ice Storm, the unlimited test, 4,669. Sun Spider JavaScript test, as you saw, 1578, where lower numbers are better, and the fastest phones score the 400s to the 600s. It's about half as fast as the Snapdragon 800, 801, and flagships. The thing is that these days, the, the CPUs are so fast on here. You've got a quad-core CPU that a lot of people don't need more. If you're really into the, the coolest 3D games that are available, sure, go for the Snapdragon 800 or 801. But if you're just your average user, more than adequate here. Call quality on the phone is very good, happily. And data speeds on Verizon Wireless's LTE network, also excellent. Here in the Dallas area, we average about 25 megabit per second down and 10 to 12 up, which is certainly competitive with AT&T and T-Mobile in our area. Now for a little bit of gaming, we're going to try out Call of Dead, first-person shooter, and we'll see how that plays. All right, so here we are. We've got some big, ugly bugs coming at us, which we have to shoot. This game has pretty decent graphics. It's also a small download. It's like under 50 megs, which these days for a game is quite impressive. So I can handle some 3D game first person shooter kind of action right here. Not bad at all. Again, for the price tag, you get the big screen. You get certainly a decent enough CPU for everyday use and some moderate gaming here. Not too bad at all. So that's the LG G Vista, again available now on Verizon Wireless for $49 on contract, $399 off contract, will be coming to AT&T as well. And like I said, this is a, a phone for those of you who are looking for a real big screen device, obviously, that's still reasonably manageable in the hand, not as big as something like the G Flex. You also don't want to spend a lot of money. Again, it makes the most sense for those of you who are purchasing retail, where you're going to have to pay full price. Not so much if you're looking at the two-year contract pricing where it's pretty close to the LG G3 and I would certainly pick that for a $50 difference over the two years of my contract life. But other than that, certainly a pleasing enough phone. Uh, we'll get a little bit grimy on the back. The display is nice enough. Not the sharpest that we've seen for reading lots of text, but it's okay. For a mid-range tablet sort of phone at this price, it's not bad. So that's the LG G Vista, and it's available now on Verizon Wireless for $49. Still hard to say that name. And you get a shiny plastic, very big screen phone here. Now, if you're buying this guy on contract, like I said, it doesn't make as much sense because, well, you're going to get it for about, you know, 50 bucks when you can get the LG G3, nicer phone, for 99 bucks. 
But for those of you who have to buy it outright retail because you don't want to worry about the contract business, you maybe you busted your phone, something like that, this is $200 cheaper than the LG G3 at full retail, so it makes a lot more sense. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full written review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.